Good morning, everybody. Um, you're very welcome to the 14th annual Wales and Africa Health Conference. Um, just to say, my name is Catherine Thomas. I'm the chair of the Wales and Africa Health Links Network. We are a charity with 10 trustees, all volunteer trustees, and you'll meet some of them through the conference. So delighted to see so many people register. We've got about 170, hopefully, joining us over the next two days. So we've got uh, events throughout the day today um, and again tomorrow. So have a good look at the, the schedule and see drop into whichever ones you want. Um, I'll just ask my colleague, um, Claire O'Shea, who's the head of Hub Cymru Africa, who are supporting um, this event, and their team have been tremendous in organizing it. Um, Claire, if you could just run through some of the basic housekeeping rules for us, um, and then um, we'll carry on from there. I think I might have lost Claire. Okay, well, <laughs> let me pick up on that then. Um, the, uh, this event is in a webinar format so that only the panelists can be seen and heard. Um, so everybody else is muted, but you've got the chat function on the right hand side. So please do use that. Um, you can put in any messages that you want um, and the Help Cymru Africa staff will pick out any that might be questions. But if you have a question for the speaker, if you look along the top, of the chat function there. There's also a Q&A button. So if you can um, put your questions into the Q&A um, for each of the speakers as we go through. Um, if you do want to make um, a contribution and become visual, you can raise your hand. If you raise your hand, then we can um, choose to invite you onto the, the, um, the panel and you'll become visible. So if you really, really want to do that, raise your hand. Um, we would really value your feedback, so we will share a poll at the end of each session, and if you would kindly click on that, then um, that would be really good. It will help us to develop sessions in future. Um, and just to let you know that any form of abusive or offensive language or behaviour in the chat boxes or in any session won't be tolerated. So please listen with respect and be mindful of the experiences of others. So I am delighted to welcome um, uh, Dr. Frank Atherton, who is our Chief Medical Officer for Wales. Dr. Atherton graduated in medicine from Leeds and worked in hospital and primary care posts around the north of England for a number of years before undertaking voluntary work as a district medical officer in Malawi. So you have a lot of experience in, in the countries that we're interested in, Frank. Um, in 2012, Frank moved to Canada to take up the post of Deputy Chief Medical Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness in Nova Scotia. And then in 2016, we were lucky enough that he decided to take up the post of Chief Medical Officer for Wales. So he is a great advocate for global health. Um, and I'm sure that he planned for the possibility of a global pandemic during his term, but I'm sure you hope that you wouldn't actually have to meet the reality. But um, I have to say that the, the public support for the response to the pandemic in Wales has been consistently higher than in some other parts of the UK. And I'm sure that your advice has been uh, has greatly contributed towards this. So we're delighted to have you here this morning, Dr. Atherton. So, the floor is yours. And um, if people want to ask questions, Dr. Atherton is here till 10. So hopefully um, we'll have a chance for a couple of questions at the end. And then we will move straight on to the next session. I'll have to come out of this one and click on to the next session. Um, but we will be moving on straight away at 10 o'clock just to let you know. So fire away. Well, thanks very much, Catherine, for that introduction. And um, and it's really great to be back, you know, with you and the uh, Wales and Africa group. And uh, I'm really pleased that we're, we're back here. And it's great to see that, you know, we've got uh, lots of participants uh, joining today. It just speaks to the, the interest, you know, in Wales and beyond. It's great to see that we've got uh, participants from, uh, from other parts of the world as well. So I'm really, really delighted about that. What I wanted to do in a brief uh, time I've got, which is 15 to 20 minutes or so, it's talk about three things. I mean, we use, we need to talk. I mean, Catherine has talked about the kind of COVID context. I do need to say something about that. But I really want to talk about the the current links that we have, the international links in Wales, uh, but also uh, and thirdly about where we go and where I think we go for the future. So, 
just, you know, the starting point for this, for me, has to be, uh, you know, living in Wales, uh, living, working, and enjoying myself here in Wales, you know, is a fantastic thing, because we are, and uh, the, the, the political leadership here aspires to be uh, very a very outward-looking nation. Um, and so I think that the theme that you've chosen, global citizenship 20, you know, 20, it says 2021 on the thing, uh, global citizenship 2022 and beyond as well, you know, is is really you know important uh, for us uh, to think about uh, here here in Wales, and we do have you know legislative processes here in Wales. We have uh, the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, which requires us you know to think about ourselves in Wales as global citizens. So um, wh whenever we talk, whenever I talk with ministers about um, you know international development, international relations, uh, the door is always wide open to these. So so there is a uh, you know a good a good framework here that we can we can build on. I think. I think it was. Uh, um uh 2018 uh, when i last spoke with this group it seems like uh, only yesterday but of course it's quite a long time ago um and uh you know i think i mentioned at that time that you know, i have a strong interest as you rightly say katrina in, in international development international uh, work uh, you know through my my own career and i've worked in you know a number of different countries and wherever i've worked uh, i've always learnt something and, and brought something away. You mentioned Malawi. Well, in Malawi, I was, you know, working in a clinical environment, but also running a district uh, health system. And, and, and I, that was what converted me to a career, really, in public health, because uh, I, I could see the, the need to get upstream in, in everything we do in health and well-being. Uh, I worked in Tanzania, and in Tanzania, I learnt the importance of the infrastructure that we need for health. But also uh, the uh, the development of people. The, the, that's the, our biggest asset in in health and in social care. Uh, in Bangladesh, uh, where I worked for DFID for a, a few years, uh, I learned about the importance of uh, working with politicians. That's something that stood me in quite good stead uh, as I moved over here uh, to Wales. And in Canada, I, I, I also uh, learned a lot about different health systems and how important it is that we don't just look at our own systems, but that we can pick and choose the things that work uh, in, in, in other systems as well. Well, you know, we, we're coming uh, through and hopefully, uh, you know, at some point out of the COVID pandemic, but really uh, lots of things have been paused. And I wanted just to kind of reflect on, I'm sure many, many people, uh, you know, in this, uh, in, in, in the audience today, I can't see you all, but I'm sure that you have, you know, many of you, if not all of you, have played a huge role in, in uh, helping to tackle the COVID pandemic, both here in Wales, in the broader UK and uh, and and, and uh, globally. So thank you to everybody for what you've done. It's not been easy at all. Um, uh, you know, in thinking about the international dimension, um, one of the positive things for me is that it's it's opened a lot of other doors to have conversations with people about how different uh, countries and different uh, agencies are managing the pandemic. And, you know, throughout this, I, I, I can think of discussions that we've had with South, uh, colleagues in South Korea, in Sweden, in Germany, uh, in the US, in Israel, uh, and of course in Canada. And you know, in all of those places I have, have come together in some ways to, to try to help to manage the pandemic. And there are things, I mean, it's been a difficult time, a really difficult time for all of us who've worked in health and social care, I would say. But uh, you know, there are things, there are some positive things that come out of that. And one of them is the, uh, the, the real um, extension of digital work uh, and, you know, this type of a conference, in fact, that we're having today, uh, you know, and hopefully will run smoothly. Sometimes these things, you should never, you should never curse these things, should you, because uh, sometimes they, they go off the rails. But, but our, our ability to use the digital world uh, more effectively is one of the real strengths that's coming out of COVID. And I don't think we'll go back from that. I, I hope we'll get back to having some face-to-face -face conferences and meetings, but, you know, we're saving uh, carbon footprint uh, by doing it this way as well. So 
So as we move forward out of COVID, you know, there are other challenges. And of course, this week, uh, COP26 is happening up the road in Glasgow. Uh, and, and, and it brings to our mind that, uh, that, uh, uh, that we need to think not just about future pandemics and how we plan and prepare for those, but how we deal with the substantial, the existential threats that the globe fa faces, that we face in, 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 on planet Earth around climate change. So, so that's just a bit, a bit of context, really. Um, uh, so, so what I wanted to do next was just to kind of think about some of the present collaborations that that, that are uh, ongoing uh, internationally, you know, here in Wales. And as I say, we do have a quite a wealth of collaboration in, in healthcare and and in other sectors uh, across uh, across Wales. Uh, so I think of education and our. Uh, links that we have uh, in the health and life science research. Uh, part of my, my job is to uh, to look after the uh, the resources that we put into research and development in the health sector in Wales. We spend about forty three million pounds in uh, across in, in Wales on research and development, and I think there is more opportunity uh, to have an international bent on, on that. And that's something that certainly has come out through the the pandemic. Uh, when I think about the workforce, I also think, of course, about you know international student recruitment. We Wales is a very welcoming place for international students, and uh, Global Wales, I know, works to increase uh, and to diversify uh, the student population uh, to to look to recruitment to partnerships between different higher education institutes, uh, so that we attract you know people from. Uh, around the globe uh, who can bring uh, their expertise, uh, can learn here in Wales, can uh, take away things from here in Wales, but also can bring uh, rich cultural and uh, and technical understanding as well. Uh, and then I think, you know, about some of the, the training institutes and the relationships that we have. We have in Wales a WHO collaborating centre on midwifery, for example, uh, and that, that looks to strengthen midwifery education and practice across all the member states of the European Union. Uh, it's a WHO uh, collaborating centre and it aim, aims to improve both the quality uh, and the care for, for mothers and babies. Uh, and much of its work focuses, of course, on low and middle income countries in Eastern Europe, uh, where midwifery as a discipline really isn't as developed as it is in, in the UK. Funny enough, even in Canada, uh, midwifery really wasn't a, a well developed discipline. Um, uh, if I look to to the work there, uh, things were very much uh, uh, medically dominated, and midwifery as a pref profession hadn't really taken taken off. Um, when I think about Wales and and Africa, uh, and obviously I do think about that in the context of this uh, conference and beyond. Um, you know, I think about some of the examples of what we've done around you know being a globally responsible Wales. Uh, and I, I think about the links that we have in Wales and, you know, we hear about those. I'm sure we will hear about many of them during this conference. And I, I try and think about the benefits that those links bring uh, to, uh, to, to both partners, to partners on both sides of the, uh, the partnership. Uh, and, and I think about them in terms of how they, they uh, are effective in building confidence and leadership skills in people who participate in them. I've seen that time and time again uh, about how teaching and uh, training skills can be developed uh, through, through these partnerships, about how ideas, uh, I've talked about innovation you know, through COVID, but how ideas and innovation uh, can be shared between uh, different nations and uh, different uh, different cultures. Uh, I think about how uh, the models of healthcare can be uh, provided and and how they can be adapted uh, so that they meet better meet the needs of of the population, uh, the populations that we serve, of course. Uh, and you know, I can't help but think about how we work together to prevent uh, uh, disease transmission, uh, global diseases, pandemics, etc. And that's obviously something that we need to do. So I think now is the time to gain a renewed sense of energy uh, around what we can do in health service delivery here in Wales and how we can refresh the partnerships that we have uh, so that we are stronger here in Wales and that we contribute to the global environment. Uh, the health and social care group, which I uh, am a part of here in Welsh government, you know, does make a contribution. It's not a huge amount of money, about fifty 
thousand uh, pounds a year to uh, the Wales and Africa program just to support the links. And I think we need to think about those in the context. I know we're going to go on and talk about the reports and the reviews that we've done of our links programs, uh, but we need to think about how we expand and, and build on what we've done so far. Um, one of the great pleasures over the last, I would say, year and a half for me has been the deepening relationship with the WHO, and particularly the, uh, the WHO region for Europe and the, um, the, the, the group in, um, in Venice uh, that, uh, that works on health equity. Uh, and we do have a memorandum of understanding uh, with, with WHO, uh, which seeks to build healthier, uh, deeper collaborations around health equity. Uh, and uh, we, as a product of that, we've produced a, a wealth health, health equity status report, and uh, we'll be using that to build and build back better after COVID. Uh, so, so really strong links, strengthening links with WHO, which I think is really, really important. Um, and, and finally, uh, you know, on this kind of theme, I, I, I do, I am pleased to see that uh, all of our health boards, I think all of our health boards, we have seven health boards uh, delivering health services here in Wales. And I think all of them have now signed up to the charter on uh, international health partnerships, uh, which we first started, I think back in 2014. Uh, so, so it's really good that all of our health boards are committed to that. I think that the practice and the practical implementation of that you know, has been hampered through COVID uh, and varies, if I'm honest, between health boards and there's probably more to do in that space. But I think it's good that all of the health boards, you know, have signaled that they're intent to, to participate in the international work. Um, so I know we're going to go on and talk uh, very shortly and I think Kit will be leading on this about the the the, the two reviews that uh, that we've uh, undertaken, uh, been undertaken by the uh, THET, the Topical Health and Education Trust, um, uh, over the last year and a half or so. Um, one of them was a rapid review and then building on that, looking at how we maximise the potential. And I think we, it's right today that we go into the detail and try and understand what's in those reports and how they can take that forwards. They, they, they do make it clear about the extent of international health activity which is taking place in Wales. Uh, it's good to reflect on that, to celebrate that. Uh, but then the big question is, how do we uh, build on that? How do we increase our capacity in Wales to engage internationally? How do we strengthen the NHS support that I say comes through the trust, but also through Welsh government? How do we strengthen that going forwards? And how do we build excellence into the programme so that, uh, so that uh, things can get even better? Uh, there's also a thought about, um, you know, about how we work with the commercial sector. I think we need to give greater consideration to that and how we coordinate uh, our activity under, uh, you know, under, under the broad strategic umbrella that I've outlined. So those reports have been published uh, and uh, you're going to reflect on them uh, shortly. I know they're, they're good reports. They're well written. Uh, they've been received by government. The government hasn't yet decided how to deal with those. Uh, there's a discussion ongoing uh, with the minister really. Um, what I'm suggesting uh, and I think is going to take place is that we're going to set up a steering group to look at the recommendations, to think about how we drive them forward and to provide advice to the minister. Uh, one of the things I've learned, you know, in, in uh, the various jobs I've done is that uh, we can advise, you know, as civil servants, we can advise as independent as NGOs, uh, it's really for ministers to decide they hold the purse strings and the decision making. So uh, there is something about bringing um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the politicians along with us. And again, just to reflect on that, you know, we are in a fortunate position here. Eleanor Morgan, our new health, uh, secretary for uh, our, new, our new minister for uh, health and social care, uh, since uh, since uh, never, um, uh, since the, the new government was was formed just recently, uh, you know, formally she was working. She was the minister with responsibility for international relations, and so you know, she 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 is uh, very versed in international development and uh, the, the issues that uh, that we 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 are dealing. So so we will we will be bringing her alongside with us on on that. So. Uh, I think that's the way forwards. And so, you know, in conclusion, I just wanted to say three things. First of all, um, there's a lot going on in the international space in Wales. There, there has been, there still is. Poor, we have paused things. Things have taken, I would say, a backward step because of COVID. I think that's understandable and um, uh, that's um, uh, inevitable. 
Um, but now is the time to get back on the track, to, to refresh what we're doing, to think about where we go for the future, to plan for the future, to be ambitious and bold, and to, uh, to get back on track with our, um, our work of being a good global citizen here in Wales. So I, I'll, I'll pause there, Catherine, if that's okay. And I don't know how you, <laughs> I do have a few minutes if you, if folks have questions, and I don't know uh, quite how we handle those, but I'll, I'll hand back to you as, as chair, if that's okay. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you sit in your own room at home and you don't know whether you're communicating with anybody at all. So um, thank you so much, Frank. That is a, a really lovely introduction to our conference. And you're absolutely right, you know, that things have been very challenging and some of what we have been doing has had to go on pause uh, and that we do appreciate that. But I think you're also absolutely right that this is the, the moment to be thinking about how do we get back on track and how do we become much more bold and ambitious and that's what the reviews are kind of encouraging us to do so i'm really pleased to hear that um you are thinking about setting up a steering group to see how we uh, how welsh government could respond to these reviews but i do think that you know we, we've all learned that we are a global village haven't we and that what happens somewhere else comes back to us here and how do we make that mutual learning and mutual benefit really work for our partners as well as for ourselves so really appreciate uh, uh, what you're saying and the support you're giving um i don't know claire have you seen any questions in the q a um coming in there uh, this is all new to us this format so please bear with us because we are uh, still finding our way around um air meet there's um there's no questions in the box at the moment. We do have some with their hand up. Um, we have got lots of comments about the positivity of the continuing commitment um, for Wales for our work around global health and solidarity. And um, obviously COP26 highlighting some of the challenges for us all at the moment. We do have five minutes. So if everyone, if anyone would like to drop any questions into the box, we are prepared to take them. Um, we do have a couple of people with hands up. So Catherine, are you happy for me to hand the mic to Christine Glossop to ask a question? Absolutely, yes. Okay, this is new technology, so wish us all luck. <laughs> Christine, you're free to ask a question if you're um, if you're available. Can you hear me now? We can. Yes. Okay. Um, I just put it on the on the question answer. Actually, it was about COP twenty six um, and the climate and ecological crisis, which are really overwhelming us, or um, certainly will be overwhelming us. Um, and the huge problems that the global south face particularly with their public health that they're facing now so what could um wales public health do to influence the uk government which has a lot more power to make change especially now with their um in their role as hosting um cop 26 yeah thanks uh christine uh yeah it's a great great question and of course you're you know you're right to flag that, um, or to imply, let's say that you know much of the um, much of the um, the ability of the you know rests at the UK level. You know, we're a small nation, Wales. We have devolved responsibilities. International development, of course, is not a devolved function. Um, uh, so, so there's two questions to me. One is, what can the Welsh government do, and then what is it, what can the public health world do? Uh, in terms of the Welsh government, you know, uh, Mark Drakeford is up in uh, in um, Glasgow this week. Uh, you know, I understand he's doing uh, a session with the other first ministers and uh, and the prime minister. Uh, so, you know, we are playing. I think Wales is playing uh, on on that stage, and rightly so. Um, we, you know, have in Wales uh, tried to take a more proactive stance than than perhaps some other parts of the UK in terms of the the targets we've set, the global targets that we've set. So, so, uh, and so, 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 there's something about uh, the the leadership space uh, that Wales can occupy there, and about influencing uh, at a UK level uh, what we do. Um, personally. Um, you know, I meet with the other chief medical officers, and in fact, one of the uh, another of the strengths of COVID uh, has been that uh, we, as the four CMOs of the UK, meet 
far more regularly and not just on COVID, but on a variety of issues. And so we do talk about cl uh, climate change, about the, um, the agenda. We had quite significant discussions about COP26 kind of going going into all of this. Um, and, and so we do have a way to influence what happens through, through that route as well. Um, you know, I, I think that is the, the answer to your question. We can only really seek to influence, you know, we don't have some of the direct levers at our at, at, at our you know in, in our control other than you know at a more micro uh, micro micro and meso level some of those health links that we have you know can be exploited so there are things that we're doing here in wales around uh, climate change and i'll give you one example if that's right christine i'm sorry i'm talking too much but what, what, just one example is that our, our my anesthetic colleagues here in wales have done a fantastic job of reducing the uh, or changing the anesthetic gases they use uh, so that they are less uh, less um uh, potent in terms of global warming and and it's make, you know it, it's a small change which can, which can make a huge difference and and you know taking those ideas and sharing them globally is just one example of how we can go from the micro to the meso and potentially to the macro level impact thank you very much and uh, i see there's one more question from mary evans are you okay to take one more question yes, frank yeah yeah, yeah. Um, Claire, can you bring Mary? Um, yeah, I'll bring Mary on stage if it's one minute to 10. So the next session will start shortly. So please keep um, it brief, Mary. Thank you. You should be on stage and able to speak now. Actually, thank you, Dr. Atherton. This isn't a question as such. It's, it's just another dimension uh, of, of, of mental health very relevant between uh, Wales and Africa. I worked as a mental health welfare officer, but my my base is uh, music and drama. And uh, two years be uh, well, before all this happened, I had the privilege of attending a Hub Africa Refugee Day in Llanelli. And the, the singing and the drama was, uh, well, it brought tears to my eyes. And because of my work, I went and I'd spoken to all of them and gave them some Welsh folk songs as, as a thank you. And because of that, um, the uh, people present have uh, delegated me uh, to uh, explore and, uh, um, you know, sort of, go into every sort of cultural aspect of uh, what sort of get, getting um, places in the Eisteddfod, in, in, in the National Theatre, et cetera, et cetera, because they, the, we both realised that the music and the culture was so much a part of our um, healing in mental health uh, so I, I know this is rather different from what you've been saying, but um, I think it's equally important to see the relevance and the um, so, so so different the, the cultural meshing together of of health and culture in in, in Wales and Africa, uh, and uh, you know now that this is almost over. I, w I will be uh, honouring my promise to get into every part of Welsh cultural life and mm -hmm. mental health nurses who, ha who are equally mm -hmm. as um, uh, uh, enthusiastic as I am. In, in Ma Mary, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry to, really sorry to interrupt you, but we have, you know, we are um, yeah. coming I'm to sorry, the end I of our time, to so appreciate your point. Um, it's just a mental health point, which I, you know, I, I want to bring just up. Just around it off. Thanks very much, Mary. That is such an important point. And uh, what a great example of one of the great strengths that Wales can export, our music, our culture. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much for that. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate your time again, Frank. Um, uh, just a, it's a quick point. There's um, Baba Gana, who uh, works in one of the health boards, points out that there is um, reluctance in supporting clinicians requesting leave to support healthcare in Africa. So I'm not expecting you to answer that, but I just wanted to highlight that, that that is an issue in one of the um, uh, participants. That out. We, if, if there's any other questions that come up, if it's okay, we can um, 
maybe communicate afterwards or do something by email if there are points that participants want to put to Frank. So uh, keep putting the, the questions in the chat and we'll pick that up if we possibly can with them um, with Dr. Atherton when we can. So um, I'd just like to, to say thanks again for coming. Um, if people have got any feedback, I think Claire will put something in the chat for um, the, the link to the feedback session. Um, we're now going to move on to the next session, which people will have to leave and then come back in. So you'll have to come out and come back in um, and then we'll kick off with the reviews that Dr. Atherton um, was talking about there. And hopefully that will be the stimulus for Welsh Government and for everybody in civil society and in the NHS who's involved in this to see how we take things forward. So um, I'll come out of this now and see you immediately in the next session. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Goodbye.